<laughs> a quest for an ancient treasure. An adventurer beyond compare. The hero we all need. The legend returns. Indiana Jones and the Shrunken Pants. No, no, no. What? Meh, bootleg VHS tapes. I'd rather watch the Crystal Skull. <laughs> In a world filled with intergalactic space battles. Metahuman destruction on a global scale. And psychopathic serial hauntings. There's only one team who can make sense of it all. When your world is overrun with rampant pop culture. Call Luminary Guardians of Geek. Oh yeah! We're back, baby. We're back. <laughs> I don't know where we went, but we are back. <laughs> I don't know. We took a little break, just a little break. But uh, the reason we took the break is because we had to catch up on a lot of pop culture stuff. Right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm Loop, and I'm Larry. <laughs> this is Guardians of Geek, and we are back. It's been it's yeah. been a while. It's been we've a couple done a show. Of yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. It just that we've talked about doing shows and then it just yeah. never happened. And then there he is. And but now we're we're like, you know what? This is important. The people need to know this information. We <laughs> are at least yeah. at least two people have said, hey, you gotta do another podcast. Exactly. That's all we need is two. So, so Jay, <laughs> this is for you. <laughs> Jim and Spencer. Yes. <laughs> I don't know who they are. But. <laughs> All right. So, well, like, what have you been up to in the last few months? What, what kind of things have you been geeking out on? I've been like doing everything. Like, I've been like watching. I've, uh, I, of course, on my um, New Year's um, uh, resolutions, I've put on, I always put on each year a couple shows that I haven't like watched in a long time. So, I, I finished Buck Rogers, like, like the original Buck Rogers series from like the eight, like late eight, early, early 80s and late yeah. 70s. So, I finished it. Second season. Times? only two two seasons oh okay that's so one crazy. was one was pretty much a full season and then the then they revamped the show that's when they brought in hawk i don't know if you remember oh, that yes. and yep. that was and then they were in the searcher and they searched planets like they weren't on earth anymore and that was the second season and it was a maybe like 10 episodes or 13 oh, okay. so and so, they, they were the most painful 13 episodes to get through but i got through them so really <laughs> oh, the, the I Hawk being kind of cool i thought he was too uh he's not really in it a whole lot like he's in episodes suddenly he'll just show up in the at the end of it or whatever to help out but he uh they to clean up at the end yeah kind of i don't know what they were doing in the show it was they made it a lot more serious in the second season oh. like like more like serious episodes and then at the end they tried to throw in the joke but that would get you out of the episode and it was just like oh. no, no i'm not i'm not buying it i'm not buying no. it so i do want to go for hawk as halloween because that that feather hair like that he has that looks like eagle hair yes that's got to be done i got to do that at some that's, halloween coming up that's pretty cool i think that was probably the only thing about him that i thought was cool but he looks so cool i, I couldn't then when you see him now you're like eh, it's not so cool as, as he thought he was but at the time right. it seemed cool fair enough <laughs> well i'm glad that you endured that for us all so we yeah. don't need to do that <laughs> yeah that's what i was working on <laughs> well we uh here in Ontario, the uh, lockdown sort of shifted gears and movie theaters started opening up again. Thank God. So, Loop, yes. Yeah, so it's been a long time coming. So Loop and I have been doing our our part to put the movie industry back on its feet. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, there's just, a, it's, it's funny because there's a lot of people that are like still don't really feel comfortable going to the movies right now. Like we're just we're just into the probably maybe two weeks deep or three weeks deep into being able to watch movies at theaters. So yeah. um, people are starting to go back, but it's, it's a slow process. Yes but it's so good. Like it feels oh. so good to be back and just the smell of the popcorn and just being in the seat. Like it just, it really is different. Like I mean, we can watch movies at home and you know, I mean now with like Disney plus running movies, same day, like black widow, you could yep. have gotten at home on the same day or you could, but it's just not the same. No, not, not at all. Being in the theater. It's just, I just was so happy just to be sitting in that seat watching the previews and <laughs> <laughs> great. So, so what have you gotten out to see? I have seen, I went and saw Black Widow. 
Yeah. Uh, I saw, I did get it at Disney, like the Disney plus like premiere or whatever. I watched it there, but then I had to see it on the big screen. I was like, I can't just watch it at home. I got to see it again. So I've seen it twice now and I saw it on at the theater as well, which is really cool. Yeah. I also saw, um, Cobra, the GI Joe Cobra movie. I saw that as well. Yeah. Which, what were you oh, sorry. I liked it. I'll, I'll yeah. put that, I'll put this out. I really liked it. It, okay. it bombed at the box office big time. Did it really? it, yeah. Yeah. It did. I think it was like 80 million to make it. It made only like, I don't know what's made now, but at the time, I think it only made like 13 million the first weekend or something. Like it was, oh. it was pretty low. They're hoping the overseas money will bring it back, but I thought it was really well done. Like, cause I, the, like the other Joe movies were a little bit all over the place, but uh. this one actually is pretty tight like it's it's got a great plot and it's like i mean it's still got the cheesiness to it or whatever but i mean it's got ninjas in it what else can you ask for in a movie it was pretty cool i thought i thought it was good huh interesting i and it's strange that it didn't make its money because there aren't i mean there's not a, t- a ton of like there are no except for black widow there are no other like marvel movies like big ten pole movies you think it would have done really well i just don't think gi joe has the pull that like yeah. that like Mar- obviously Marvel would or whatever. I just don't think there's enough because the problem is like GI Joe's kind of pushed by the toy industry and there's like, there, there's just not enough of both going on that to really push that, like that character enough to, to, I think they'd be better off, honestly, GI Joe to be in, in like a TV series than it would yeah. be as a movie. Like they could probably do a lot more with it. So I, t- I totally think you're right. I mean, if they could make Hawaii five Oh, into a tv show like a revamp the tv yeah. show and have it run for like what nine years now i'm sure they could make gi yeah. joe to make this work i think they need to do an animated series much like a heat the he-man one or, or voltron or whatever they've done um yep. or she-ra they need to do like a new joe like series and and yeah. to get kids younger people more interested and know who they are because i don't think a lot of young people even know like who snake eyes is right no. so that's um I, that's what they need to do like yeah. i think to, just to get the general interest back into it and then then start releasing movies past that well, i wonder if they're going to because now i mean like you said with he-man like they've totally re- revamped he-man and yeah. brought it back and kids today wouldn't know who he-man is but now because it's a new series the interest is going to be there again and you know who knows where they take it but yeah that'd, that'd be a good plan i i i'd, I'd, I'd watch that <laughs> I, I definitely watch a gi joe series for yeah, sure the way they're doing them now they look so good so yeah. it'd be it'd be pretty cool i totally agree <laughs> well i i've i've gotten out to the to the theater a few times uh, i watched black widow like uh like loop over there um quiet place two. Oh yeah it was the one movie that uh like we said when it was first announced and then the theater shut down where he said we're, we're gonna we're, like we're gonna wait for this movie we want to see this movie on the big screen and then of course uh, amazon prime posted the movie for free and it's there and it had been there for a couple of weeks and we're like ah do we like we made a promise to ourselves to see this movie in the theater do we watch it for free or do we pay to go to the theater we paid to go to the theater oh that's good that's fine so, yeah it was great and it's an it's fantastic like it's if you did you see the first one i've never seen the first one so well, i was playing well because my problem is i just you know when the movies come out and you just miss them or you just right don't yeah. see them so i'm gonna i'm gonna watch it at halloween i'm gonna watch that one and the other one back to back so perfect well you can watch them on amazon prime <laughs> okay, perfect that's where I, that's, that's right. where i will watch them then that's good because <laughs> it won't be in theaters in halloween <laughs> no not at all no um and then speaking of sort of that that sort of not really horror but thriller genre i went out to see uh m night Shyamalan, Shyamalan's new movie old yeah um because I, I i mean as much as he's sort of messed up a bunch of times <laughs> i'm still a fan of his like i still yeah. will go see I, he's always got great concepts for things yeah. like the, his concepts are great it just sometimes like the the, execution. the execution's not a hundred. Like, what's that show that we keep watching? And I'm uh, like, Serpent. Like, yeah. Why am I still watching this? Like, again, great concept, simple. great yeah. look, everything about it I like, except for it's just not going anywhere it's to very me. Very slow. Yes. yes. Exactly. And that's, but for some reason, I'm still a fan. Like, I still, so I really wanted to see this movie in the theater and I quite enjoyed it. Now, okay. Like, it, the, again, the concept is really cool, and he's got a twist ending, like a, a traditional M. Night yep. twist ending that you won't see coming, um, but it's clunky. Like, it's not, it's not like, the best directed movie that, <laughs> that okay. you'll ever All see. Right. So, I mean, some of the acting is, and the, the lines are clunky and, and, and cringy a little bit sometimes, but 
overall, I, I really enjoyed it. And by the end, with with the when the twist, you're like, oh, okay, it's all come together. It's cool. So I, I recommend it. I think it's I think it's good. I, I was okay. happy. To, I was happy to see that. Um, but the one that I that I will be going back to as soon as possible is the Green Knight. I, I went to see the Green Knight uh, last week, and I, it was one of those movies that I finished watching and I could easily have gone out to the box office, bought another ticket and come back and watched it. I don't right even know what the green Knight is. What? Uh, I saw, I saw a poster for it. I was in Toronto yeah. a couple days ago and I drove by like the big, the big, um, like a movie theater that's on just off the 401 when you're coming oh, yeah. out of Toronto and there's like a giant poster for it. And I'm like, what is that? I, even, I don't think I've ever heard of it. It's, it's great. So the green Knight is about, um, sir, it's, it's from a book that was written like 600 years ago or something called Sir, uh, Sir Gawain and the green Knight. Sir Gawain was one of, uh, um, King Arthur's Knights of the round table. Yep. Um, so he was one, so it's his story. Um, and like, I don't want to give too much away, but it's, it's a, it's a traditional quest movie. Like you would, you would really, yeah, like I, I, I was all really into like, King yeah. Arthur and that when I was younger. Yes. So I'm like, so I'll probably like, I would enjoy that for sure. It's a traditional now, but, Keep in mind, it's there's not a lot of action. Like it's it is it sounds like there should be because it's a quest and it's a yeah. knights and swords and stuff like that. But it's it's more character driven. Okay. Um, but it's just Dev Patel plays Sir Gawain, and he is just awesome. Like I'm a big fan of of his work, and he's like he just he's so relatable, and he just feel like you just feel for what he's doing. Um, and the music is good. Like it just is a really totally different, like you've, it's a quest movie like you've never seen before. Um, okay. and, and I fully believe, mark my words, that it will be nominated for best picture. Write it down, write it down somewhere. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm pretending, I'm pretending to write it right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I think it will. I, I think it's kind of, it's later in the season. I think that it's we're going to see a nomination for uh, okay for best and potentially screen uh, screenplay too and maybe even Dev Patel for best actor. I don't know about I'll, that. I'll I'll check it out. The because uh, uh, I know you have a history of like recommending things and then it's like you haven't either finished them or yeah. you're uh, including like the the um, High Republic Star Wars novel. Did you ever finish that first one? Yeah, I'm 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 getting there. I'm because you told me about it. this is like the greatest thing and I I assumed you had read it. Yeah, so well, then. And then I went and bought it and read it, and I'm like, "Is it the greatest thing?" I don't uh, know. <laughs> well, see, I mean, it was. It's great to the point where I stopped reading. <laughs> um. So I don't know how it goes after that. So I finished it. So. I know. <laughs> okay, but so here, here's how good the night, the uh, the green night is. This just arrived in my mail today. Oh my god. <laughs> the book. Because I'm really good, but this is this is what this is a the kind of book that I like. Because look at it, nice. And, it looks like a pamphlet. <laughs> it's fifty pages long. Fifty pages. <laughs> That's my kind of reading. <laughs> you can read that like in about a minute. <laughs> I know it's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, see, this I end up buying this. The I don't know if you can see it or not. Like this. Oh, this, is, yep. this, this is the second book. Yep. I feel compelled to read it, but I don't know how much further I'm going to go in this series. Like the. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you the mean, second book, book you a mean shot. This one here. <laughs> oh, that's a teen one, isn't it? Like, isn't that there? Yeah, it... yeah I, I'm not reading the youth ones. Yeah, I got that one. And then hey, oh, wait, that I goes know. along with your your pamphlet book you just bought. Yeah, <laughs> the, right. your, wait, the... There's this one too. <laughs> oh god, that's like the, that's like the baby one, isn't it? Like, the... yeah. Oh wait, wait, wait. There's also there's also the little kids reader. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, bu I'm much better at collecting than actually reading. <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. God. <laughs> I know it's embarrassing. Uh, but I like. Do you have a pop up book. book as well? Or? Oh, it's in the mail. It's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> I, 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 I struggled a tiny bit through that Star Wars book, but that's a whole other. Yeah. It, that's a whole other episode. But the, um, anyways. Wow. Okay. So yeah. So those are the movies we saw <laughs> and the books we read. <laughs> or didn't read <laughs> all right <laughs> Wait, how about we move on to the pop five that's a good idea what's hot we'll tell you what's hot it's the loop and larry pop <laughs> five we're back with the pop five which we oh, haven't yeah. in a little while so this one's a little bit of a special edition pop five because uh, just uh, about a week before we're recording this, uh, San Diego Comic-Con at home happened. Right. Once again, they couldn't 
they couldn't open up the doors and have people walk in. Um, but they did for the second year in a row Comic-Con at home, which means that all their panels were uh, running on their YouTube channel and they, but they still dropped a lot of trailers and they still had a lot of information and that sort of thing. So instead of doing a full recap, because it's now been about a week or so and all the information's out there, we just wanted to do the top, the, the top five uh, ex exciting moments for us. Like the, the yeah. things that got us excited about San Diego Comic-Con uh, at home from 2021. So let's jump right into uh, the, the five things that excited us about the San Diego Comic-Con at home. So starting with number five, we've got the uh, official first trailer for the new season nine of Dexter. Oh yeah. So this yeah. is called Dexter New Blood. And uh, so Dexter ran from 2006 to 2013, um, had eight seasons. And uh, basically I, you'll, you watch Dexter the whole oh, yeah. series. Yeah. So I love Dexter. That was great. I mean, obviously the first four or five seasons were the, I think like the best, Yep. Um, but in the last episode, Dexter ends up like sailing into the sunset and into to a storm. And then he ends up being like a, a like, like a lumberjack or something at the end. And we're all like, oh, no, <laughs> like, the lumberjack sort of like the thing you do as a joke. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like so yep. that he actually became a lumberjack. So that was fun. Yep. So, so that's where we left him. Yeah. And so this this picks up at least it picks up from where that left off. And I think it's going to try to like just pick up the pieces. The original showrunner from the first four seasons of Dexter is now the showrunner for this series. So That's that'll, good. that'll be good. Um, and so he's basically living in the small town kind of like working and, and trying to live a normal life and not killing as far yeah. as we know, we don't know for sure, but it looks like he's just, he's got a girlfriend uh, and yeah. uh, who happens to be, I looks like it looks, she happens to be a cop. So that looks like trouble right off the top. Of course. And, uh, and it looks good. And Clancy Brown's in it. And he's going to be sort of his adversary, which I like Clancy Brown a lot. So he'll be good. Yeah. And, um, but, but the, the, the trailer indicates that they're like the dark passenger is still there. Like he's, Oh fighting, yeah. He's fighting his dark passenger, which is yeah. like, it's, it's going to get ugly. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Dexter. I think it's such a great series. Um, and there's going to be some returning characters. Jennifer Carpenter is going to return. I don't know how um, that's and uh, also the Trinity killer, uh, John Lithgow is going to oh, yeah. return. I think they're all going to be in his head. Like he's going to, he's going to actually have conversation kind of like when he had with his dad. Yeah. I used to show up. That's exactly what's going to happen. They're just going to be like either in flashbacks or he's going to see them and actually have conversations with them. Yeah. And, and they're going to, they're, yeah, that makes perfect sense because that's that's how he kept the father in the whole series. He would like ride in the car beside him in the seat and like have full on conversations. Yeah. So why wouldn't he do that with Deb? Or you know what I mean? Like it, that totally makes sense. It, yeah, people it, he feels guilty about like or or like because John Lithgow would be a perfect person to really push the dark passenger part and then yeah. Deb sort of the other part, right? So yeah. he's um, got like an angel and a devil kind of on his yeah. shoulder. <laughs> so and then uh, I'm hopefully like maybe some other characters from the other show will show up like Batista or somebody like in some oh, yeah. sort of form. So do you know I, I I haven't heard this. Is it just a single season or is it an actual series? I don't know. I it's far, so far it's like just the one season, but it, I'm sure if it does well, it'll it'll continue for a few seasons. I think that's my guess. I just I haven't heard whether it's like a, a limited series or if it's a full series. But I, I'm guessing it's it's back. Like it'll yeah. be just because it's got a new title. Like it's Dexter New yeah. Blood. Uh, yep. new, yeah so it just it makes sense that it's almost like a brand new show and his son will be out there somewhere because he i think yeah. he left her with like the other girl who happened to be like a serial killer as well yes yeah i think so it was weird so yeah. anyway i think he's still around somewhere as well so he'll show up i bet at some point and and yeah. not maybe not in this series but maybe the next so yeah it's i mean i'm super excited it's it's good to have him back <laughs> yeah it's awesome i love Dexter. to have a fun serial killer in your life <laughs> yeah it's you know why not <laughs> <laughs> all right moving on to number four um blade runner black lotus um this one kind of came out of the blue for me i i did not i didn't know anything about this and all of a sudden there's a new trailer um so this is they're continuing the blade runner story um but this is now an animated series on um adult swim it's yeah. not even like hbo or or anything. it's it's an adult swim uh series which is interesting and the it's, so it's fully animated but it's like it's like like 3d animation not like 2d animation so it's really yeah, yeah. looking like it it looks like the movies like it looks like the backgrounds look like the movies and that sort of thing but it looks like it follows a new a replicant who doesn't know she's a replicant <laughs> is my guess i don't really yeah. know that many details what this, have you heard about this um this uh takes place in 2032 which is in between the two movies 
Okay. So um, that's where it kind of fits in, in, in there. It's going to be 13 episodes. And basically, I think her name's Elle. And she's like, yeah, a replicant that sort of uh, refuses to retire, basically. Yes. Like she, I don't know if she knows she's a replicant at the beginning, but she ends up finding out. Um, this is also on uh, Crunchyroll, if you happen yes. to be into a- anime or whatever. I, I just found out what Crunchyroll was about like, like maybe six months ago. I heard of it. I was like, what is that? So now I know. That sounds delicious. I know. I was, I was like, this sounds like a food I could eat. But it's like, <laughs> apparently not. It's a, no. <laughs> a syrup. <laughs> it's so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah so that's coming up and i mean anything blade runner is exciting i think i love I blade love runner such, it's such a weird series because it's got like the first movie came out and it was totally made to like have sequels and everything yeah. else and it just never nothing happened with it for years and years and years until yeah. the other movie but it's everyone always talks about blade runner but no one's ever done any much with it so hopefully this will start a new universe or something with it anyways that's what i'm hoping i mean all we had for the longest time were like 16 different versions of the first movie like, remember, remember how many times i kept releasing it it's like now it's got a unicorn what yeah. <laughs> whatever it is i know it was ridiculous. so uh, yeah so and the movies have been great like the denis villeneuve uh movies were i thought that was fantastic so yeah. this is this is very exciting i'm, I'm not I'm not a big fan of um, animated series. Like I don't, except for like the Simpsons and that sort of thing, yeah. but I don't generally watch a lot of animated series, but this one to me looks really cool. Like it looks close enough to the style of the actual movies that I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be into it and, and watch that one. So yeah, I'm, I, I like a good animated series. Like I love, uh, like, which I, which is weird. Cause I don't really like, like the Disney animated movies. No. But but I like I like like when they I watched uh, Voltron and on Netflix and He Man I just watched and uh, I watched Invincible like I just I yeah. love I, there's I, there's something to them I do like and they can do a little bit more and um, but uh, yeah this looks really cool I'll, I'll watch this for sure yeah yeah absolutely um, number three on the list is a Moon Knight which as <laughs> as, we, as you know from listening to podcasts in the past is one of Loop's all time favorite uh, superheroes. Please never say Moon Knight. <laughs> oh, that's not how you say it. It's not moon. It's like Moon Knight, not not Moon Knight. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the night involving the moon. moon. <laughs> it's not like that. <laughs> well, whatever you need it to be was what it is. But the uh, so Moon Knight, of course, could be on Disney Plus. It's going to be one of their shows in 2022. Um, right. Part of the whole apparently that's leading towards like the Avengers or something as well. So he'll continue on from that series. So Oscar Isaac's playing Moon Knight. That was announced back in May and uh, he showed up. The panel wasn't for Moon Knight. It was for another show called Head Wounds, but he showed up. Uh, he was part of that as well. So he he started talking about Moon Knight a bit, but he, he didn't give a whole lot of information. He just said it's going to be a wild, wild show. This is good. And I'm really excited about it because I know nothing about Moon Knight. Uh, and so I'm <laughs> Mr. Knight, as he's well known as. <laughs> Sir Knight, <laughs> I so I'm excited to watch this thing just so I can like follow along when Luke talks about this character because he's talked about him so much and I'm like, oh, it's the Moon Guy, yeah, <laughs> the Moon Guy. Oh, this will yeah. be six episodes as well, so oh, perfect. There you go. So I'm not sure how he fits in the Marvel universe. I don't even know what's going on in the Marvel universe right now. It's so confusing with all the timelines and everything else going on. So we'll see how this all fits in. <laughs> awesome, that's something to look forward to. It's, they've got a they've got a good streak going, so I'm I'm excited. Yeah, good. good. Uh, number two on our list, uh, Loop and I, for most of our lives, I think, have been big fans of uh, the original movie Dune by uh, David Lynch. Yeah. Um, even though it got terrible reviews, it's super confusing. It's kind of weird, but we both love it. Like, it's just, it's one of those movies that we can watch over and over again. So the new uh, Denis Villeneuve version um, had its new trailer released during uh, Comic Con at home, and and I think it was, it's the first full length trailer for. Uh, for I the movie. like yeah, it's pretty lengthy. It's like three minutes and something. Yeah, it's a good length, of it. and I gotta tell you, I'm I'm pretty stoked. It looks good. It yeah, looks pretty I'm, cool. Like it I'm doesn't look cool. as as weird as Lynch made it. No. Like, this one looks a lot slicker. I guess you yeah. could say. Well, and, and there's also um, lighter moments. Like in the trailer, there's some like moments of almost like zingers, like comedy, yeah. comedy bits. So, and there were like the David Lynch version had none of that. Like there no. was no, nothing funny about it. But this one looks much more, um, it almost looks more like a, like a Marvel movie where it's serious and it's epic, and, but there's light, light moments to break it up a little yeah. bit. So it's, it's weird to see that because, you know, for 
uh, 40 years almost, we've been watching the other one, which is so deadly serious. It's weird to see them have moments, like Jason Momoa is in it and delivers a kind of a, a like a zinger kind of line. Yeah. And, and it's it feels a little bit weird. So hopefully it's, you know, hopefully it doesn't throw us off too much. I don't think it will. Like Denny Villeneuve stuff is is fantastic. And, but, and special uh, effects have come a long way since the David Lynch one too, right? Yep. So and David Lynch wasn't really a special effects type of guy as far as that went. So um, this, this looks really cool. I think it looks good. I've tried to read the book. I'll just put this on the side. I've tried to read the book like in the past, like probably like four times and couldn't get through it because it was just too complicated. So I, I don't like when you, you know when you have a book and you have they talk in like weird terms in that those gloss, there's like a glossary at the back yeah. of the book. And I'm like, you have to keep flipping to the back to understand what they're talking about. So I just kind of gave it up, but I do like the movie. <laughs> yeah. And I of course collected all of the books and have oh, never, been, never read a single word. <laughs> <laughs> That's what books are for to collect and not for. read. <laughs> they look good on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> what are these words in here? What is this? Well, considering you own the Star Wars Junior Edition book, I'm sure uh, I, I can see the level of your reading. <laughs> you mean this thing here, right here? Why would you own that? I don't know, but I do. I haven't read it, though. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I believe it comes out in November. Is it November this year? Yeah. Yes. So, so that is, I'm really excited. And this was a, another one of these movies that's been delayed because of the lockdowns and because of COVID and everything. So it should have been out last year or maybe three it's years ago. October 22nd. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Right. So it's it's finally, I think, going to hit the theater. So let's hope that things continue going where they're going so that theaters don't get locked down again because <laughs> we got to go see this thing. <laughs> uh, and speaking of things that I we're really excited about, number one, and I don't believe this actually came out during San Diego Comic-Con. It may have come a, a day or two later, but it's the uh, the the first, I mean, it's a, it's a second trailer for the new Ghostbusters movie, the Jason Re oh, Re yeah. reboot. Um, but it was the first trailer that gave a little hint at Bill Murray being in this movie. Um, and it comes right at the end of the trailer and it's just, it's just epic. And, but this looks like they're, like the you know the first trailer's been out so probably you've seen what it looks like but the aesthetic of this movie is totally different from any of the other ghostbusters movie like it's more grounded like it's yep. more re like real feeling um you know it's not it doesn't look as sci-fi i mean this this trailer obviously there's a lot of creatures and ghosts and you know there's a lot of that but it feels more like the way they're doing movies now, like with it and um, you know the um, Pet Cemetery, like it feels more real, like a real world situation yeah. that happens to have ghosts and stuff in it. So yeah, I'm I'm really I am so excited about this one. Like I'm not sure where it's gonna go if they if they want to do another movie after this or it depends I guess how this does. But I like how they're just keeping it simple, keeping it in a small town, um, based more like I guess a little bit more around kids in this one. Um, and which again gives that it feel like sort of yep. stranger yes. things feel yep. um the uh yeah i like the the way they're they're doing this they're not making it too big it looks like in the first in the first movie so um yeah it looks cool i think yeah, i looks, thought that was dan Aykroyd at the end you're saying it's bill murray like well, what the, it, the, it, it sounds like dan Aykroyd to me like, sound like the, I, i'd have to listen to it again i thought it was i because all he says is we're closed or something like it's yeah i couldn't like, tell who like, which one it was to me it sounded like uh, Bill Murray, but it, it could be. I mean, as far as I know, they're both in it. And I and yep. uh, um, what's his name? Who plays Winston? Um, oh, uh, no, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But I think that, like all of the surviving Ghostbusters are in this movie. Yeah, um, as far as I know. So uh, I just, you know, I just, I'm just, I love, and and the fact that it's being made by Jason Reitman, um, he's got like this personal connection to it because his father made the original. So yep. you know, it's coming from like a place of love. <laughs> yeah. No, this is. This is much better. It's it's it yeah. seems more like organic, like yes. A, a, yes. a continuation than like redoing the the other Ghostbusters movie, like which I like the concept of, like the um, all female Ghostbusters. But they could they should have just tied that way more into the original, like a continuation of the other. Yeah. If they're going to do that, well, instead of trying to reboot it, yeah, and especially since that movie had um, um, Dan Aykroyd and and uh, Bill Murray in it, but they weren't playing their original. Yeah. I'm like, well, well, then, so are we starting again? Are we? I, that, yeah. it, was just a, it just was a bit confused. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's in the multiverse, that yeah, other one. So, 
Yes. But this one, I like how this one's just a continuation. Yeah, it just seems a lot more organic. It's got That's the right. mini Stay Puff Marshmallow guys too, which yes. I love. Yeah, they yeah. look cool. So you know that people are gonna that they're gonna be marketing those as a toy. So people. Oh yeah, have- there's no doubt about that. Like ever, those little mini guys are gonna be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the pop figure for sure. Actually, they look like pop figures. Just they in do. The- <laughs> <laughs> so that's our pop five now i just want to add one thing i forgot to mention early in the movies it's uh one of the one of the movies that one of the things that i was watching uh in during this time that we were we were off um is a is a movie trilogy called fear street okay. um it this didn't happen during san diego comic-con i just i don't i want to talk a little bit about it um it's on netflix um and it's a tr- it's a trilogy uh that was based on the books by rl stein who wrote um uh goosebumps the, okay. the, the goosebumps books so he wrote this which, which is totally in line with the type of books you read okay go on exactly <laughs> which i've never read but anyway <laughs> but so there's a whole bunch of these fear street books so they so the director uh leah janiak um created this trilogy based on these books and the the movies came out one a week uh, which was really cool. So you'd watch the first movie on the Friday and then the following Friday, the next movie came out the following Friday, the third movie, but they're full, they're two hour movies, like they're yeah. feature length movies. <clears throat> and it takes, and it's about uh, um, like a witch's curse in this town and each movie goes back in time. So the first movie is called Fear Street 1994. The second one is Fear Street 1976, I think, or 78. Oh, now I can't remember. 76 i think and then the last one is fear street 1666 oh so that's they cool back, they go back in time um they are even though it's rl stein and he wrote the goosebumps these are very adult like they okay. are not kids movies <laughs> there's a lot of content in there that is not appropriate for kids a lot of gore really good gore um and a lot of adult situations so but they are excellent i was i was so like i was really excited about it because they're the throwback like the like the first one 1984 felt like like a stranger things kind of thing yep. so i was intrigued and i i all three of them are equally as good and the story is great and it, it wraps up beautifully um so i would i just wanted to put that out there because i highly recommend fear street um as a as a kind of lead into the halloween season coming up <laughs> um it's it's just a fantastic trilogy and the, this the director leah janiak this is her she only directed one other movie in 2014 called honeymoon so this is her, her first big breakthrough thing and man she's awesome like the stuff is the acting is great and the story is really well told so yeah i just want to put that out there even though it's not a pop five but i just didn't want to forget to mention it because it's i highly recommend it all right. Well, speaking of a really well-told story, let's go to the yes. pop capacitor. Okay. <laughs> Eighty-eight miles per hour. All right, we are here. It is uh, Loop and Larry. This is the Pop Capacitor, where we look back at an old film, TV show, toys, whatever it is, anything retro, and we kind of re-review it and see if it still stands up. And uh, recently this year, the Indiana Jones tr- trilogy, or qu- what it would be called, it's like a quadrilogy. Yeah, <laughs> um, came out and uh, and 4K. 4K. Yeah, it's a brand new 4K set, which is great, which I bought. Yep. And uh, one of the movies, of course, in it, that's why I call it a trilogy, because the fourth movie is in it, which is The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. So we decided to uh, that we really wanted to punish ourselves. And we're going to review that today and see if it holds up. It came, So Raiders of the Lost Ark came out in 81. Temple of Doom came out in 84. Last Crusade, 89. And then they waited a really long time and then came back <laughs> with, yeah, with uh, Crystal Skull in 2008. And yep. I got a few questions just to, to in your head as we're wa- talking about this and we'll review them again at the end, but I just want them to sort of in, in your mind. Is this movie as bad as we originally remembered it? Number okay. one. Okay. Number two, does it re- um, deserve the bad reviews that it got? Okay. And number three is, should there actually be another movie? Because there is an Indiana Jones 5 that's coming out. Yes. So I think next year. Yeah, I think it's 2022. Yeah. So just have that now when we do finish this review, we'll, uh, we'll answer those questions. Okay. Uh, so let's, we're going to do our usual hits and misses. And we decided that uh, we'll start with our uh, limited hits Yep. and then we'll move on. So I right off the top, I'm going to tell everyone that we, this is not a great movie. I, in my opinion, no. 
I think in most people's opinion, okay. quite honestly. I, I have to I have to preface this whole thing by saying, like, we're both massive Indiana Jones fans. Yeah. Love yeah. the original trilogy. Like, I could watch it over and over again. Yeah, See, look, and he's even yeah. wearing the original. My trilogy. doctor, my Doctor Jones shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we went into watching like the the when they announced the the fourth one, we were super excited, you know, and it came out. Um, I just want to preface this whole thing before we start saying there's only been, I think, two movies in my life that I've almost walked out of. <laughs> and this was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So, that's where I'm coming from on this. All right. But anyway, right. things maybe things changed uh, when I watched it this time. You never know. Let's find <laughs> out. And I haven't seen this movie since i saw it in the theater so today really? i watched it today because i just i like i bought it with the set when it came out yeah. uh, they did another they put the set out again like about maybe eight years or ten years ago yes. or um and then but i just i couldn't bring myself to rewatch this movie like i just so today i watched it again I, i've got some time behind it i'm gonna rewatch it and uh so, so really, this, is, this is only the second time you've ever seen it yeah i did i, I was just so disappointed in it after i saw it the first time I was like, I don't know. Yeah. I just can't go back and rewatch it. It feels like a, an old fashioned um, adventure serial, which is what the Indiana Jones series was supposed to be. Like when George Lucas came up with it, he wanted it to be like those old fashioned, um, you know, you'd go to the movies every week and see another section of movie and it was an action adventure. Yeah. This one had that feel. Like it, it did feel like an old fashioned type action movie to me it, it it felt like that and so i think they accomplished their goal of making it an action like it a bit of a cheesy sort of actiony kind of movie it, it felt like that so, yeah it had the feel of an indiana jones movie like it, it yeah, there were some yes. parts so this movie just to preface it just takes place in the 50s yeah yeah so, so it, it's i think it's 10 years after the last one yeah um after last crusade i think it's 10 years i think 10 years has passed yeah, uh, in the movies. So yeah, so obviously Harrison Ford is much older and and everything. And they they do say at some point, you know, it's been ten years or ten years ago or something yeah. like that. So so yeah, so that, I thought that was a bit of a hit. Like they they it did it fit aesthetically. It fit with the other movies. Yeah, for the most part. <laughs> I had for a hit uh, that Indy was back. Okay. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, I'll reiterate on that. The, yeah. Okay. It was exciting that like there was another Indiana Jones movie because yeah. I like the character so beloved. Like I love Indiana Jones and the uh the fact that he was back, I thought was really cool. And even when you first see him, you're like, oh my god, like the nostalgia just pours in again. Like yeah. it's like it's such a great character, even though he's older in this, but he's still it's just such a cool, cool character. Yes. So that that was exciting. Okay, good. <laughs> was- um I'm going to say um, visually, it's pretty stunning. Like the sets that they built and the way it's shot, it's quite beautiful. Like it's when you watch it, it's like holy, cow. like it's real. It's cool to look at, um, like visually. Like when they're actually in the, I don't know what that structure. It's not a temple. I guess it's kind of a temple at the end. Yeah. When all the crystal guys are sitting in their chairs, like that set piece is really cool. Like it visually they did a good job it, it's a really it's a cool movie to look at <laughs> yeah and i had that i had that the uh that whole sequence in the temple was cool like i had that i thought yeah. that felt like an indiana jones movie them going through yeah. the temple and all the different things happening in there um i thought that was pretty cool like yeah. that was that was well done i thought that was good um the music is really good <laughs> yeah i mean they already had it done, so I yeah. mean, you couldn't really screw that up. <laughs> no, so that was nice. It was nice to hear the old Indiana Jones themes again. So that was, I enjoyed that. <laughs> um, I like, I'm going to put two hits together because they kind of fit. Um, I like the um, the references. There was a, like quite a few references to like some of the older movies. Yes. Like when they're in the, the warehouse where all the artifacts that probably Indies found over the years and other people found are all in this big warehouse. Like at the end of Raiders when they're, when they're rolling the Ark in that yeah. giant and this i'm assuming this is the same warehouse from yeah. that from that movie um they they actually one of the crates gets broken you see a piece of the ark in there so yeah. it's actually in there um the uh there was a lot in it that where they mention other things there's a part where he's in his office and there's a picture of um marcus yeah. uh, from the other movies and a picture of his dad like who have both passed away in real life um stuff like that and the other one i really liked was that they brought marion back Yes. from from Raiders and I, I thought that was a hit because I do like her and yeah. I thought she was great in it and I thought she was she was having fun and it looked uh it just felt like an Indiana Jones movie because she was in it like yes. and I always felt like she should have been all in all the other ones too like yeah 
I, I think she could have done as good a job as of anybody as I, I know. I read at one point that they wanted to have each movie have a different sort of like love interest. Right. So that was the idea behind it. But especially the one with it, with um, uh, Sean Connery, I thought, because they brought back all the characters from Raiders. Yeah. I thought she should have been in that one for sure. Yeah. Cause he didn't really have a love interest in that one a no, little bit at the beginning, but like she should have been in that one. Like yeah. there's no doubt, but I agree. I don't know what happened there, but you're right. I, she, she was like, I mean, really, cause um, Raiders of the Lost Ark was really him and her. Like it was the two, the two characters who drove that movie. So yeah. it, it did seem odd that she just sort of disappeared from his life after that. So it's, I thought it was great that it was that, that she was back. And then it was her son, um, Shia LaBeouf plays her son who ends up being Indiana Jones's son. So there's a connection yeah. and, and then they get married at the end. Like I thought, yeah, I thought that wrapped up their, their story well. Um, my one other hit, I've got one more, uh, that uh, Shia LaBeouf, his character's name is Mutt uh, in this. And the biggest hit of, of, of this movie for me was that Mutt did not get to wear the hat at the end. <laughs> yeah, actually <laughs> I, last, I did like that as well. Cause it, I, came, cause I, it came close. I was, I was worried that they were, it was literally going to be a passing of the torch. Like, okay, now son, you get to wear my hat and you're the new Indiana Jones. I was like, please don't do that. Please don't do that. And he didn't. And Indy grabbed the hat away from him, put it on his own head and walked off. I thought that was cool. Like, yeah, that was, that was cool. Yeah. It was like saying there is no other, like Harrison Ford is Indiana Jones. That's it. Like we're not replacing Indiana Jones with somebody else. (laughs) So I I was happy that they, that they respected that, like respected the character that way. Yeah. Yeah, I have a hit and miss. So that'll move us into the misses. Cause that's, is that your last hit? That's the last hit. (laughs) (laughs) All right. The hits, hits just keep on coming. And now they're done. Uh, This is is a hit and and miss. Um, I did like Kate Blanchett as the villain in, in this but I didn't like her at the same time. I thought her accent was a little over the top yeah. for this. And sometimes it, it sounded English, like just like an yeah, English yes. accent. Yeah. Um, I kind of liked her look. I thought she was like, she stood out as the villain. Um, oh, yeah. But, but yeah. the uh, I, her voice and accent kind of threw me off. Like, yep. I, I'd rather she had a little bit less of like, like, okay, this has got to be the villain because her accent's like super like strong. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's been way more subtle and still, be, like that was what was cool about the guy in the in Raiders of the Lost Ark, like the villain who burnt his hand on. Oh the, yeah, I can't remember what his name was. But obviously. but he was like he was obviously quite evil, but he was more subtle about it. Yeah, like he was more like just kind of like uh, like he was he was cre- he was creepy. Like he had a, yeah, like, more creepy than yeah, him. yeah. So no, I agree. So that that's a perfect lead into my first miss, um, which was so her name in the movie is Elena Spelko. Elena uh, Spelko. Uh, that's that's who Kate Blanchett plays. The one of the biggest misses for me, and I thought this from the first time I saw the movie. Right at the opening, they show that she has psychic powers. Like she holds her hand up in front of Indy's face because she's trying to read his mind yeah and, she, and he she can't do it and she says oh you're harder to read than i thought and then she turns around and like reaches her hand out and uses like the force to blow up this uh lock on the on a the warehouse door so that the door slides open and she does it literally like by like with telepathy and then that's it they never go they back ne- they never her. come back to it no, I'm like she's got psychic power. She can do things with her mind. Like she could open this door and blow up this thing, and they never ever talk about it again. I, I, and what? that was it, as it, to follow up on that. The I just thought that whole like is that necessary for her to have psychic powers? No. Like, what, <laughs> like how was it used? Other than I think she thought that the the knowledge from from the aliens at the end when she'd be able to handle it because she has a psychic ability or something, but I guess, but, but I, it didn't it, make any sense. No, like, it, it was unnecessary. Like it, yeah. it was not needed in this movie at all. Like, no. And, and, but if, even if they had kept it going throughout, like she had like used some of her psychic powers to, to change Indy's mind or to do, you know what I mean? To force him to do things, at least it would have been there and you would have understood why that she had it, but to have her do it right at the beginning quite obviously and then drop it just didn't make any i'm like well then why do you take it out of the beginning like don't give her any powers <laughs> it, it was unnecessary for her to have yeah. powers like i didn't yeah. understand why she had them no that didn't make any sense and, and, and that's like a there's a lot of things that were unnecessary in this movie and that yes. was that was just like one of the beginning ones yeah that sort of that sort of kicked it off yeah 
Um, one of my misses was, I know this took place in the fifties, but there was way too many fifties references Yeah, like for, us to, <laughs> for us to know that it's like, like they slapped us in the face, like over and over again with like the beginning has like these kids in a car, old car driving yeah. with like playing, uh, like ain't nothing but a hound dog or something. It's like, yeah. I, I'll have to preface this by saying, I hate the fifties. Like I just, <laughs> Like as a as a backdrop for movies, I just don't like it. I don't like that era. I just there's something about it I'm just not a fan of. Right. Um, it, but the uh, I just it, like yeah. this drove me nuts. And there's all these other little references that they throw in, like just so well, you knew it was the fifties. Yeah, like they were at a like a um, like the cafe or the diner, and then there was like a rumble between the the yeah. uh, like the guys wearing leather jackets and the jocks from the school, and there was like a rumble, and they and even when um, Mutt, Shia LaBeouf, you first see him, he's riding a motorcycle and he's wearing a, a motorcycle cap that's slightly to the side. It was yeah. it was modeled after um, uh, Marlon Brando in, um, oh no, I can't remember the name of the movie, but it was- like I, know, I know what movie you mean. Like you, yeah, 1950, like it was, they were so trying to make it 50s and and even they didn't need to like they you could see from cars driving on the street. It almost looks like they took a list of what's all the things that happened in the fifties, yeah. and then they tried to add them all into the movie, like yeah. like at least a reference to them of some sort, so we know it was in the fifties. I just didn't like that. I have a whole other thing with like this movie being set in the fifties, anyways, because I think all the Indiana Jones should be. I know he's older, and that was yeah. the the purpose of it, but the, the these movies work the best in the 30s and 40s like yeah, especially in the 30s the whole thing is he's an he's an archaeologist discovering these new things you know the farther it gets in history there are fewer discoveries that need to be made you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so in the 30s and 40s like finding a, a goblet was like super like exotic yeah <laughs> you know but and, and the, the first yeah the further you go the less exotic things become yeah. and the easier it is to access things or get to places yeah. and and uh, things like that, like that whole temple at the end, it ends up being like outside, like they're at the top of this building, like someone could have just flown there in a helicopter and landed yep. on it instead of having to go over 16 waterfalls to get to it or whatever exactly. it was like, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that seems like yeah. it, it more believable in the thirties, less than the, as you get further into the, into the um, yes. years. hundred um, percent. And speaking of things that were not believable, why they had to put him in the middle of a, a nuclear explosion. Oh my God. Site, where he jumped into a fridge. I mean, the whole nuke the fridge phrase is so appropriate because that was just so stupid. Like he, I mean, the, the premise, I guess, makes sense. He, he's in a, a lead lined like box. So he'd be protected from the radiation, but that fridge still would have been blown to smithereen. Like it would have just been blown yeah. away. And it, like when he bounced down that hill, like there was still stuff inside the fridge, like that held the shelves and stuff. He would have been massacred in there. Oh <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it's, the whole fridge scene was a hundred percent unnecessary. Uh, Again, it was like, they're going down to listen and go, Oh, we, they set off nuclear bombs in the fifties. Yeah. Let's have them show up in this like neighborhood, like yeah. that, which seemed, awfully close to everything else that was in that area yes um totally. he would have been totally demolished that, that fridge would have melted like yes yeah because and otherwise then, they, they'd make every tank in the world out of like fridges yeah <laughs> like, you know what i mean like there's no there's no purpose of it no there wasn't and then it just it came to a rest he just opened the door and got up brushed himself off and walked away I'm like, yeah no first of all he's now like in his 60s <laughs> you know i mean i just i was like wow this is this was not well thought out. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then speaking of which, just one little minor thing that it just kept popping up up to this point with the fridge. Um, there were groundhogs. They, they kept- Oh my God. This, so they, this can lead me into my next one. Okay, good. Um, they, okay. They, the they, unnecessary yeah. use of special effects. Yes. <laughs> and, and it started with the groundhogs off the top. Like, it's like, I know it's kind of cutesy and it's like, it, it was so dumb. Like, it, just, there was no need for it. No. No, there was no need for it. And it just, they showed them a few times and there was like, there was I no could, uh, Yeah, I could buy the first one, but after that, it was like, I didn't need a whole family of them like looking in disapproval or whatever, what was going on. Like it was and just like- being there with, Yeah, being there when the fridge landed and opened up and there was one just standing there looking at them. Hi, how you doing? Yeah, no, it God. was it was so dumb. Um, and in this special effects, the unnecessary use of special effects, I felt like in the other movies, even though I know there were special effects in them, 
here and there, but they were used sparingly and at the right moments. Yeah. I felt like a lot of like, you know, when Indiana Jones is in the first and Raiders and they're in that, he's on like, the, they're fighting within all the vehicles and he's on the front and it breaks. Like those are actual yeah. special effects. Those are yeah. real stuntmen doing Phys- those. Yeah, physical effects. Yeah, there's yeah. physical. Now that's like half those physical effects were like either, like when, when Shia LaBeouf who, who played his son Mutt was on those, like swinging on the vines. Oh my God. And like, so he- yeah. He's on so, the vines. All those monkeys show up, and then suddenly yeah. they're all—they're all his best friend, and they're showing him how to swing on the vines. And on top of that, he, you know, how slow a vine goes. He's yeah. be- beating the speed of a car. Yes, <laughs> he got in front of them, like, and somehow managed to navigate every vine so that it took him back to the roadway, meaning that there were vines, you know, strategically like growing so that people could swing to the back to the road, but. So that leads me into my next one. That entire sequence of the car chase uh, through the jungle was so badly choreographed because it was it was the the villain and Indy and it was um, uh, Marion Ravenswood who was driving the one car. The cars were side by side, perfectly side by side through this entire jungle. First of all, they had a sword fight. So um, oh god, Mutt, Mutt and the the Russian villain. We're standing on both cars having a sword fight. They were perfectly balanced. Like they had no issue just standing there having a sword yeah, fight. Like, like it was on a normal road. Yeah, like, they were on a dirt, like they were on an unpaved road. So it would have been so bumpy. It would have been looked like this. <laughs> <laughs> and they never were, do that again. <laughs> that's what it would have looked like. Th- those special effects look better than what was in the I movie. Well, the other thing too that that kind of screws that whole scene up is that they had this this vehicle that had these giant blades that were cutting oh, yeah. that were cutting through the woods to form the road that they were driving on. Yeah, and then and within like the first like couple minutes of that scene, it gets blown up. But that was gone at that point. So what are they driving on? Like that was the whole point of that was to create the road that they were driving yeah. in on. So they were literally driving on nothing. Like there was no paved road, but it, they were perfectly perfectly balanced and perfectly steady on these two things having that. And then from that um they went to uh oh so so then the the sword fight stops and somehow mutt ends up straddling both cars so he's he's got a foot on each car and they're both driving exactly the same speed down the road and then of course the massive vegetation keeps coming up and hitting him in the groin (laughs) as they're going like 50 kilometers an hour and he doesn't even budge. Like he doesn't even move. He just he keeps getting hit. I'm like I'm like, it, come on. Like see, this, this is it. This was a per- this is a perfect yeah. example of a scene that like it was all special effects and was not realistic. It didn't feel I mean, like the other movies where it's like okay, it's far fetched, but there's real stunt people doing it, and it looked a lot more real. As yeah. soon as he got onto those vines and those there was all those monkeys, it's like come on. Like yeah. that to me, at that was that scene was worse than the fridge scene. I could yes. almost buy the fridge scene. That yeah. scene I could not buy because it was, no. you cannot swing on a vine that quickly. No. You're looking, so think of them going as like, even almost as fast as someone on a highway yeah. driving and he's catching up on vines. Like, yeah. so you got the momentum and then you got to swing back and you got to like, like and, they don't even. I mean, so the Olympics are on right now and I've watched some of the gymnastics. <laughs> These are people who have trained like, 24 hours a day for years this is a dude who like who knows how much upper body strength he has he and it would take a miss, lot he doesn't miss a single vine like he nails every vine and then perfectly coordinates the next like it's physically impossible to do what he did because dude, like, when you when you come in on a, i don't know why we're talking about this so much but when you come in on a vine like you're grabbing a vine that's not moving so then you got to grab it and it's got to move to the next vine yeah but, but you need some sort of swing in order to get far enough to get like, so you don't just grab onto the vine. It just keeps going. Like, I don't yeah. know. It's just, it was so dark. And then of course, like there's a horde of monkeys who are following him. Once they get to the vehicles, of course the monkeys instinctively attack the bad guys. <laughs> like they fill up the, the car with the bad guys. They don't touch the Marion Ravenswood car because they know that those are the good guys. The monkeys yeah. only attack. Like it just, like, I don't know what they were thinking when they made this movie. Um, right before that chase scene, there was a scene where Indy and Marion step into quicksand. Oh, God. And, <laughs> so they they stepped into quicksand, and, and so they start to sink. And this is, this is me I, watching I the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they sunk to just above their ankles. 
and they're like calling for help. Oh, help! Don't move! Don't move! Mutt and the other guy that John Hurt is is another character in this. They're literally standing. I don't know, eight feet away. They could literally reach out their hand and just pull them out of the sand, but they just stand there and watch them sink. And so, and then, and then they decide it would be a good idea for Indy instead of like, first of all, first of all, where's his whip? His whip kept coming and going. Like he, oh yeah, it, it would disappear and then he'd have it again. Yeah. So he didn't have it in this scene, so he couldn't just like and like climb out of the thing. Yeah. But um, so then they decided it would be a good idea to to have a comical moment where Indy describes the scientific nature of quicksand instead of like trying to get out. Like he just wouldn't do that. That's not his character to be like. So quicksand is actually a combination of water and sand, and if you move around a little bit, then it, it just that's not who he is. And then he yells to the John Hurt character to go get help, get help, get help. Well, he knows that the only other people who are there are the Russians. Who is he expecting to get help from? And that's who they're and that's who they're hiding from. I thought that yes. too. I'm like, where is he gonna like? It'd be different if he said. It'd be different if he said, "Get me, go grab a branch or something." Yes. Like, 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 like it was just so badly written. I was like, who wrote this? Like, this is not. Like they just, I just, it, I don't know how a lot of this stuff got through the studio process and everything without somebody saying, okay, this is not well done. <laughs> well, this is the one thing I found, even with some of the other Indiana Jones, is that they they like to throw him into like situation after situation after situation. So yeah. in this movie, there was a lot of situations that were that were kind of created for, for them to get into to some sort of peril, right? So yeah. This scene made no sense because all they did was escape from the, the Russian camp. And then all of a sudden they're in quicksand and then they get out of the quicksand. Like that was, that was all that really happened in that scene. Nothing was gained from it. No. And then the Russians show up, but like, it was just another scene that filled up the movie for nothing. Like there was yeah. no, nothing gained, but it'd be different if they were like going through the temple and then there was suddenly quicksand and that was a trap. Yes. It would have been different, but this isn't, this was just in the jungle for no reason. Yeah. Or if, the, was, or if the Russians were following them and then we, like a few of the Russians were like sucked into the quicksand and, and killed off. So it like dwindled their numbers a little bit or, or something. something. Yeah, there was no purpose to it. And I found even some of the other ones too, like it'd be like, they just get finished this. And then all of a sudden now they're into this situation. And there's yeah. like, it just one thing after another. And it was this one, they were trying too hard to come up with things that, that would put them in peril of some sort. And, and probably some of the idea, oh, it'd be cool if they're in quicksand. But it, it really made, other than there was a couple pieces of dialogue that, that were given between Indy and, and uh, Marion in that scene, that yeah. could have happened anywhere. Like, yeah. it just didn't make any sense. No, it didn't. It, didn't. it, it was just, it was a, literally a waste of, of time because yeah. nothing, nothing came from it. So, yeah. and, then, movie... and, then, and then Mutt throws him the snake as, instead of a rope. Yes. So all I can think is this poor snake's getting like stretched while he's like, yes. pulling it. like, oh my God. It was just, I mean, of course they had to do that because there had to be some reference to a in snake. the fear of snakes. So we're, how else could we possibly get a snake in here other than to do this? And in then, then any other scene where they could have thrown a snake, like a bunch of snakes yes. and like, another part of it or something and, and it just made indiana jones look dumb because he he would not grab onto the snake to get pulled out until they started calling it a rope oh now it's a rope so i can grab onto it just made indiana jones look dumb like it just it yeah it was that was really dumb wow that was, <laughs> that was so bad that whole se that whole sequence was just like terrible yeah that whole part and that was a good 20 minutes of the movie <laughs> yeah I, can i can i i'll move into a, a miss off yeah. of that is that yeah. i think in this movie they made indiana jones way too bumbling yes in this. like because I, I realize he's older and they're, they're trying to play on that fact but yeah. it was just a lot of like really like kind of bumbling scenes where he was like just doing things that i don't know if he would do like yeah. there's a part where he, he he swung on the whip in the warehouse and then he kind of misses the car and then swings back like that yes. kind of stuff like i mean it was i mean i see why they did it but there's just a lot of kind of bumbling things that he did and things out of character. I think yes. that he did. Exactly. And it was only 10 years later. I mean, it's not like it was 30 years later and he's a really old man and can't handle it. Like he, he was doing a lot of, like he was doing a lot of physical stuff. He shouldn't have, he should have been more um, agile and more, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. He just came across as not the same Indiana Jones that we saw in the other movie. I, yeah. So the whole purpose of this was to take this crystal skull and find the body of the alien that belonged to and put it back onto the body that's yeah. that was their their goal for this thing so the villain was standing there and 
was, you know, so like into this. It was literally exactly the same ending as Raiders of the Lost Ark. Pretty it was, close. It was literally her saying, I want the knowledge. I want the knowledge. And as soon as like the alien realizes it, he burns her eyes out, like literally flames coming out of her eyes. And she she doesn't melt, but she like evaporates. Yeah, it just disintegrates. It's, it disintegrates. It's literally the same as the Germans looking into the Ark box and like wanting to see what's there and then melting and then exploding. It was the yeah. same ending. I'm like, yeah, I felt like, I, I think they were giving her the knowledge but she, it was too much for her to handle. She couldn't oh, handle it all and then she just exploded. I don't know what. I don't I know. Honestly, I was, I, I struggled a bit with the alien part at the end. Yeah, but then I'm like, okay, well, I, I, I got to suspend my disbelief because in there's, in Raiders, they like the Ark of the Covenant like blew everybody up. The in uh, Temple of Doom, this heart was removed, and but, but yeah, so there's like some fantasy stuff, and you know you yeah. got, but, but it's just that they didn't. I, I just, I mean, it, like I said, it looked really cool. Like it, visually, it was a really cool, yeah, thing to watch. Um, but then they also at the end of this, once the aliens float away in their spaceship or whatever um especially the 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 whole purpose of this thing was they're looking for the city of gold so they thought that it was a city that was filled with riches and treasures el dorado yeah yeah, exactly but then indy says gold also means treasure which also means knowledge they were just here for the knowledge that's what they were like and i'm like well so what knowledge did they gain what knowledge did the aliens get they didn't like what did they get? I don't, I have no idea what the knowledge was. They were yeah, like I don't know if that meant like the no, I don't know if that meant the knowledge like other people were trying to get knowledge from the aliens. I'm not really sure what that meant. Like I, I that's yeah. what I'm assuming. That's why it was like people said it was a city of gold or whatever it was. But yes, I, I, there's a lot of things and this just didn't make sense. Like no, the, but they didn't clarify. Like like was, who are those people? <laughs> Well, like at the when um Mutt and India Indiana go for the actual like when they find this crystal skull, there's all yeah. these people protecting it, like that were like running into holes and out of out of holes. And I'm like, who like, are these people? It was never explained who they were. They were like kid kid ninjas. <laughs> yeah, and they, and they just they and then they fight a couple of them and then some scurry into holes and then they never saw them again. Like they no, were like, and they, just, and they just walked away with the skull. Yeah, they just they just gave up apparently. Like this is sort of a more all encompassing miss. Right. So the in the final scene, the aliens are sitting in their chairs, yeah. um, all sitting there like they are. They've all been put in their chairs, or they've got there somehow. But the only reason they're still sitting in their chairs is because one of them had the head removed, so they couldn't all come together into one one entity because this one's head was missing. But the but the problem with that is that until that head was stolen, they were all together with all their heads. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So they should have, before the head was stolen, come together and flown away. Like, I don't know what, like, were they, were they just like chatting and just talking and, and somebody, Cortez, walked into the room and yoink, took somebody's head and ran out? I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming they, they like, they live there for a while, I assume, like as a council or something. I don't know. I, I really like, I, don't, I, I was so disinterested by the end of the movie. <laughs> I really didn't care why they were there. Like, I just like, let's just get this like the temple scene getting to the that room was really cool yes like like that felt like an indiana jones movie but the um the the, once he got into the aliens part i'm like i'm i'm kind of out a little bit because it really didn't make a whole lot of sense like it just it just didn't like all the other movies were like you said before like they like they were almost more organic like everything made sense like they you know the the reason the arc acted the way it did is because the nazis were evil and the ark isn't and so yeah. the ark blew them up because you know you can't have evil looking at something like that or you can't like it just it made sense like there was no question about why that happened yeah. and same with same with the other movies like the 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 everything was explained like everything was well explained like the the three stones that they had to replace uh to to get and and put back it made sense why they were stolen what they needed them for and why they had to put them back and then the the um last crusade it was just the it was the the goblet it it made it made sense the chalice this one just was so convoluted like i feel like they were trying to like trying they were just trying too hard at everything 
Yeah. It felt like a, a paint, like an Indiana Jones paint by numbers. Like, yeah, it was kind of like, okay, he, he needs to do this. He needs to have this happen. Yeah. We need to have him. And like, this has to happen in the temple. Like it just seemed like a lot of pieces were put together, but none of them really made a lot of sense. Like of yeah. why, like, I mean, again, you suspend your disbelief to a point, but at, at the same time, like, I don't mind the end of the aliens. I, like, I mean, it was a, a big ending, but then like, prior to that was like the the monkeys and like the things that like just w- took me out in that psychic ability the things that just took me like the only thing that should have powers is the thing they're going after nothing else yeah. should have powers beyond that Ooh. it should be just be like regular everyday stuff there's just a lot of that um the only other all-encompassing one i had i had a couple left over i'll just throw yeah. this one out um was the number of time people fell in this movie with no injuries oh my gosh yes <laughs> started starting with the fridge there was parts where like the like the whole like ground like came out and everybody fell to the ground the stairs went in and they all fell like there was a bunch of scenes like that and everybody just sort of got up off of concrete like or thrown or or exploded off of things and landed and and were fine like there was a ton of scenes like that the worst example of that is that they went off of a waterfall three times oh god inside inside of a a convertible vehicle which means that they were exposed to the rocks and everything and these were massive what this is like going over niagara falls yeah yeah like that was not high three times in a row with no protection and they literally just brushed it off and walked away i'm like come on (laughs) yeah that's just like it doesn't make it did not it just they were they they were assuming that their audience would buy into anything, I think, because yeah. like they just, it was just- Well, oh, even God. when at the end, like the, the, they're in this like almost like a cylinder that goes to the sky inside the temple and the water comes in. So they basically just ride the water to the top yes. and, and it throws them out. And then they, then they just cut to them getting up off all these rocks. Like they would yeah. be so injured. Like yes. they, they literally went flying like yeah. out of that thing. Like it was yeah. just, there was just a lot of that, like where I was like, okay like i can only like i you needs to look a little more realistic than they're just like all right all done like you know yeah. what i mean like, they're <laughs> landing happened. on rocks like, yeah. like jagged rocks and like, it happens so, over and over again like yeah all through the movie nobody got even like a scratch no from- yeah yeah at least in like um temple of doom uh like indiana jones like would progressively get all more beaten up and like yeah. as the movie like this was like uh, their, clothes, their clothes weren't even ripped i know like, like this in is Temple so of Dune, is yeah, in Temple of Dune, like his sleeves were ripped off and yeah. his, his shirt was torn to shreds and all of this. And there was like his he had indestructible clothing on. <laughs> it was so frustrating. Like I was just like, there's so many things in this that just like didn't make any sense. Like he's not a superhero, he's like a regular guy that goes like you know into these dangerous situations and i mean yeah he gets out of them doing weird things and like fun things but that's the action adventure part of it right. um but at least he, he but he still has injuries and he's still like especially now he's way older than he was yes. back in the other ones but anyways but my my final miss on this was um was mutt because no one asked <laughs> for mutt no one no. wanted mutt no, no one said hey i want to i want to see more mutt no. Um, he grew on me a little bit as the movie went on more so than I remember him the original time I watched it. Yeah. Um, but I still, I found him really irritating in the beginning. He, he kind of like calmed down as the movie went on. So he wasn't as bad. Uh, I just, I just, I don't know when you start bringing yeah. in like their kids and things, I just find <laughs> it kind of like, kind of weird. And that, and that's exactly why one of my hits was that Mutt didn't get to wear the hat. Yeah. Cause I was, if they had given him the hat, I just, I would have, it would have been so disappointing because he wasn't like, he's not a character I want to necessarily see any more of. So if they were going to like make him the next Indiana Jones guy, I would have been like, nah. <laughs> I found it hard to believe that he didn't know what happened to Marion and that yeah. she had a son. Like I found that kind of like, you, you think you'd hear it from somebody because they seem to have a lot of mutual friends. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? He knew yes. that, that, that other, that John Hurt character, he knew the guy that she had ended up, he introduced her to the guy that, that she yes, ended up marrying. She married. So obviously they were together. Like, so, so for her to have a kid by Indiana Jones, they would have been in a relationship of some sort. Like, like she would have been pregnant when she, when he introduced her, him when she introduced when Indy introduced her to the guy she married because she would have started dating that guy so like the timeline well, doesn't even work <laughs> I know well because she said she was married to him like and she said something like he was like three months old or he was yeah. like or I don't know what it was eight months old or something which means she got married in in 
Indy basically left her at the altar, according to the storyline. Yeah. So she would have married this guy within like a couple months, like after yeah. it, 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 so she, would have, she would have, she would, she would have been pregnant when Indy left her at the altar, essentially. Yeah. So how, how Indy didn't know that she was pregnant. I mean, and why she wouldn't have told Indy, like, I don't know. It just, <sighs> <laughs> I, that, that just didn't make sense to me like like no. considering the number of mutual friends they they totally in the movie showed that they had like yeah. you think he would have heard through the grapevine like she had a baby at least at yeah. the very least and like he seemed surprised at everything in her life like and yes. i just found that really like oh uh, it's so frustrating i don't know <laughs> so is this movie as bad as we remembered yes yes <laughs> I, I watched the first three movies on this four four K edition, and I didn't even watch this one. Like yeah. I still left, it. like I, I watched the, the other three back to back, and I left this one out of it. So the only reason I can get because this is actually now the fourth time I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, the only reason I can get through it is because I keep thinking in my head they were trying to go for that cheesy nineteen fifties action serial thing like it's not quite as serious or whatever and because it visually looks pretty good that's the only reason i can get through it but it is just so poorly conceived like it's just not good well i think you said it right there too because the 1930s was when they were doing those serials yeah and so it fit into that time period yes. and now they're like the 1950s they weren't doing them yeah so that's why this doesn't fit in it just doesn't yeah. work it just doesn't work does it deserve the bad reviews that it got yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> i i I worse. do believe so. Yeah, the, the reviews should have been worse. <laughs> and are you worried about another movie? Yes. <laughs> well, a little bit. I am a little bit. Except that, and this is, how, I don't know how they're going to do this. They've sort of hinted at the fact that the bad guys in this movie, the new movie coming up, are Nazis again. So I don't know how they're going to do that in that there were no more Nazis after World War. I mean, there are Nazis, obviously. I mean, neo-Nazis, whatever. But yeah. they're, like the Nazi party was gone after World War II. But the fourth movie takes place in the 50s. So unless the new movie is going back in time and they're going to digitally de-age uh, Harrison Ford to make him look younger. And if yeah, that's yeah. the case, ooh, like uh, that may be a, that may be a miss on its own. Yeah. But like, I mean, I like the idea that they're going to go back to the 1940s because that's where it should be, but I just don't know how they're going to do it with Harrison Ford being in his seventies. <laughs> I would rather they just re like, I mean, it, it's not needed, but I would rather they just reboot the series with like another actor playing Indiana yeah, Jones. Like, like Chris like, Pratt. Somebody. Yeah, or something. Yeah, and set it in that '30s time period or whatever, so that they can do a, like a series of movies in that time period for, with other, other sort of like artifacts and things like that. So, like, all I can hope is that they listen to the critics and the and the the fans after number four and learned what not to do, and so maybe they're making number five as a like a like an apology almost like a. Yeah. I uh, forget we made that one. We're going to go back to the 40s and uh, that'll be the actual number four. <laughs> they could be that's... listening to this podcast too and then make some sudden changes on the fly. Who I, knows I, what'll I happen? Know. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> that's it. It's we need more working. monkeys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I don't know. I like, I don't, I'm not, I'm a little bit nervous about number five, but I'm really hoping that they've learned the lesson from number four and yeah like somebody had to have decided yeah it's a good idea to make another one after that disaster it's a it's probably a good idea and this is a good way to do it somebody has to have made that call so yeah hopefully they do it right i'm assuming the fourth the fifth one like our fourth one story made money like i'm assuming it did well because everybody was probably like hyped for it at the yeah. time but then the reviews started coming in and we, i don't know if we had really the review system that we i think the internet was just starting at that point to really like you like know boys yeah know. like you're starting to read because i remember nuke the fridge became a big saying it did. and yeah. i feel like that was around that time like that it was starting people were starting to use it so um but <laughs> really died out. nobody actually says nuke the fridge anymore no but it's like <laughs> <They last. laughs> it was so bad anyways well that was that was our our, our scathing review of indiana jones 4 <laughs> uh, with a crystal skull uh i need to watch something else now to like cleanse my palate that was well, uh, well then watch Fear Street. Go there. Okay. All right. I'll try that then. It's good. I, I recommend Fear Street. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Well, thanks for joining us on another episode. Uh, we'll try to do one a little earlier next time. Like, the, yes. uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll try to get together. Caps. 
I've, yeah. I've got a movie I'll mention to you after I think we should do for the next one. So um, I don't want to give it away right now, but it's uh, it, it should be a good one. Um, <laughs> when I say good, I mean, not good. Um, the, <laughs> we'll review another movie and we'll see you next time. Check out our socials that uh, we barely use. Um, everything else is great. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time on Loop and Larry Guardians of Geek. Bye-bye. Produced by Matthew C. Loop and Lawrence Simner. A Loop and Larry production. Bueller. He likes it. He likes it. Bueller. Bad news. Fog is getting thicker. And Leon's getting larger. Inconceivable. Brian's right. It's an elf. Wax on. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? Oh, Captain. My Captain. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Wax off.